today feels and I'm sorry that it is in such a on a, in such an important topic. The last thing that was being said before before we go there, what, what were you saying then? Because I want to revisit that. I want to revisit that. Felicia, the actual screen, you control it from what? The iPad? Because the camera is screwed. Suzette, we're talking, we were talking about small business, and I want to ask, because what kind of number? Felicia, on the iPad, monitor was going on there, because yeah, it's... Yeah. Okay, yeah, but I mean the screen, it's scrolling itself. So you need to, you can, the, I, the Mevo is actually picking and choosing where it is. If you want to do that and see how it does that, maybe that's how you want to go. But we were talking about small business development because as she said, as Suzette said, and she's absolutely correct, after you get away from the big ticket items, we mm -hmm. spoke about agriculture today without mentioning things like sugarcane. Sugarcane grows in this country naturally. An organic sugar sells for eight and ten times the price of food sugar cane. We could get into the organic sugar market and deal with chain stores in the United States, and that would be a massive market by itself. Cocoa, our cocoa, best cocoa in the world. We keep talking, I paid lip service that, and I've known cocoa farmers, I've heard their stories. And, and it's just a matter of government having no interest in supporting them. But after you get away from the big ticket items, so let's see. We reclaim the picture and we properly monetize in a transparent manner so people understand what the pitch rate is and how much we get for the pitch. We set Tobago on a proper tourism footing mm -hmm. and agriculture footing yes. because Tobago is prime fertile real estate for agriculture. Yes. We get Trinidad farmers back on their feet. We give them hope and opportunity. How will the Progressive Empowerment Party deal with this? Through a marketing agency. We would create a marketing agency and invest all the food growing land in the agency. So a farmer who wants to grow food could come to the agency and say, listen, I would like to make, I would like to be a farmer. They say, well, okay, we can give you land here, and in this area, we're growing pimento peppers. But that is what the agricultural farm was supposed to be doing. And, and the other thing And I'm left for a and, 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 and all I'm saying to you is, that the government, through the Ministry of Agriculture, could give you a piece of land and all the seeds and everything else you need to grow a crop of pimento peppers, and they could tell you that in nine months, you're supposed to have on this acre of land 50 tons, and we're looking at $6.50. And I'm just saying that you could do all of the arithmetic, and as a farmer, as a, as a, a small businessman now going into business, you go into this and you start to grow and you make a nice piece of money at the end of the day mm -hmm. and you go back to them and say, okay, right, we were successful this year. Let's add you another acre. Let's see how you're doing too. You were going to work. Let's see how you're going to do. But we're starting up with 100 acre friends. But you see what you've just mm -hmm. described is called a horizontal business model. And so basically what you're doing is that you're using, you're starting at a very manageable scale and you're duplicating that system to increase the acreage and the production capacity. Mm -hmm. And that can be used throughout mm -hmm. The, the, the country. So you can start the project in one particular area okay. and you can multiply those projects as you go along because right. it's an effective, efficient, productive, horizontal business model. Correct. And, and, and again, when you, when you mentioned just now, I mean, that's a little bit way in there, but when you mentioned, I wanted to come back to the actual small business people. Right. Because what small business people need is help over the hump. Correct. Help over the hump. Mm -hmm. I am a tailor. I am a kite maker. I am a baker. I, I, I am a candlestick maker. I need help over the hump. I want to come to you and say, listen, I make 150 candles a month now by myself in my living room. Right. If you give me the facilities, if you give me help with a small operating space, and you give them free electricity, free Wi-Fi, Facilitate their growth. And I am, I am going to, f I'm not giving you a check. Mm -hmm. I am going to fund you to buy your raw material and you're going to pay me back from your sales right. and I'm going to increase with you but you're operating in a facility rent free. Mm -hmm. You're working with a credit officer. Right. His, he should have nice some business experience mm -hmm. to be able to read a projection and say, okay, I think there is a market. You've demonstrated that there is a market for your candles. That's an actual massive market. Eh? That's and I've known people in the ornamental candle business. They just couldn't go nowhere. Yeah. Okay, but you know, I will tell you something, Philip. Uh, in Tobago, they have a, something called the 
business development unit, which is controlled by the CHA, for example. And they went out and tried to have little models of giving people land to do farming. But like, it's a small little plot, you know, maybe I don't know, 500 square feet thereabouts, or whatever. And they came back, and the person, rather than farming the land, they put a structure in the house and stopped farming. Went back and got a job with many THA and unproductive, you know, work, maybe C type of URP, mm -hmm. which failed miserably. So they, they put things in place, but they didn't put systems in place to manage it. Checks and balances. Checks and balances. Yeah. Checks and balances. Yeah. Yeah. So it failed yeah. miserably. Yeah. And, and the next thing to do, be the same video. I have someone who worked there, and they gave out, I think they bragged about, I don't know, $80 million to people to start businesses. Like I call them power because you can't do much with $25,000, I'm sorry, right? Mm -hmm. Or even $3,000. And they have a 98% failure rate. But it must, if you don't have your, of the, the people in charge of who makes the decision, who gets credit, and they're managing these people, if their salary is not predicated on the performance of the charges on the debt, if you don't, you see, I, and I keep saying that we, we give people, we give people power, and we have no way of tracking what they do with that power. Okay. So we don't follow we don't follow them up. What is what is to motivate them to follow the people below them up? Mm -hmm. Everybody just looking for a job on a salary. You can assign a business coach. That's another aspect yes. that can be but you have to find, That's what we're talking but about. But then you have to find experienced professional businessmen, hopefully maybe in the retired mode, yes. and have them. You know how many you know how many we have? Yeah. You know how yeah. many we have? Yeah. We have many retirees who would love, love to. We come also back. have people in active business that can also be willing to do something yes. like that. And because it's being paid for by the government, but, but it is being a service that is that's being offered to small businesses. But so. instead they give it to some rookie, I call it a rookie, mm -hmm. and then they fail miserably yes. because they get a salary. But yeah. and they have zero business experience. Retirees who are the pinnacle of their day. Mm -hmm. Years of experience yes. and knowledge, yeah. so they can actually help these crucible businesses that now coming out there and like, listen, this is the pitfalls and the potholes that you have to look out for. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you actually, that idea about coaching, I mean, that just finishes the whole idea. Mm -hmm. But your small business and entrepreneurial development company mm -hmm. must be an important part of your economy. Yes, it has to be. Because if you're not be. giving your people, we need to find a way. To, to encourage net employees to become net employers. Mm -hmm. So you continuously train and groom and pass people through the system. You also need to pay the, 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 the people who are doing the work a decent salary. I agree you with have you. have to pay because them properly from else I'm, they're not going to do it. No, and, and I think part of the, of, of, of the inefficiency that we're seeing is that uh, we have shown in business, in the business community, a, a, a lack of regard for frontline employees. Mm -hmm. They are the ambassadors for your company and that's the first step between the customer and the company. And if you are not, if you don't have good ambassadors representing your company, it takes a hit on your bottom line. Mm -hmm. And so we need to start having packages put in place in terms of educational packages, training packages and so on that would give employees that sort of empowerment to be part of the decision making process for an organization. There's, there's no such structure in place. Which is why what I see in Tobago, for example, many of the of the new business models coming up, everybody's on a hustle. Yes. Is what can I get away with? But people tell me, and you know, I say, you want to see crime go down, incentivize and motivate the police service. Give a police officer a commission. I tell people nothing in this country works by the record. Give a police officer a percentage, a commission, a bonus on every successful prosecution. They say, well, boy, maybe the police will get carried away and plenty wrong for the rest. I say, okay, so hire internal affairs and give them a bonus for every so every rogue police officer that you're doing. So that now everybody's salary time. Yeah. Because you know, I make it five, six, eight thousand dollars a month. But if I do some extra work this month, I can make extra two, three, four thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. You've just given the police officers who willing to moonlight for drug lords. Mm -hmm. Now they're gonna moonlight for the state. Mm -hmm. Now they're gonna moonlight for the people because it's safer. They don't have to break any laws and end up in trouble. Right. Teachers. Teachers. It, when we put our GPA plan in place, you'll be able to tell who are the top 100 performing teachers in the country. What is wrong with giving each of them a check for $5,000 at the end of the day? Send them a check. Mm -hmm. Five thousand. 
Let them boast about it. Let them go to France. Let them buy rims and tires. Let them share pictures on Facebook and say this was because my class was successful. Yeah. You just motivate the entire Ministry of Education. And created right. national pride. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we need that. We need that to help you know heal this country. I gave a suggestion once to one of the an ex minister, <coughs> and I said to her, I said you have so many teachers who are becoming retirees just now. Why don't you, as they are still teachers, train them to become coaches for the children and go back into the school, because the kids know them, they will talk to them, go back into the schools upon retirement and work with the students. Well, nothing came out of the idea. Yeah, it's but pretty much the same like a business but coach. But Janice, coach for children. But Janice and Susan Love, how much real estate we own as schools? How much real estate? At three o'clock every day, all those schools close. You can imagine if you had sensible community development plans that allowed retirees and others to so, use those classrooms mm -hmm. to have yeah. other classes. Homework supervision, that is very important. Mm -hmm. And for, for peppercorn fees, because you make the class available to them, it's there. It just closed now. And make it available to you for a dollar. Well, so you that. don't go and charge people a hundred dollars to come to your class because you get it for free. Well, not just that. It will be somewhere the kids will be getting their homework done. A familiar uh, environment. A familiar environment. And it will take them to the time when the parents can now leave the work Correct. to go pick them up and yes. not let your child So that you have sitting. actually controlled your child's time and they're not let out into the open time. Correct. Time. Madness. Correct. Yes. Madness, right? Correct. Okay, now and those same classrooms, we could use those classrooms people could teach people Tai Chi. We could teach people That's martial good. arts. Also. Mm -hmm. Foreign languages. Mm -hmm. I've yeah. always wondered. Why would we shut all those classrooms down tight at the end of the day and people looking for spaces to have a class? You have again the retirees, the welfare retirees, yeah. all the retired police officers who should be running the actual police stations so the police officers can be out in the field. Mm -hmm. You have young, healthy, vibrant police officers taking uh, police reports for traffic accidents. Yeah, that is insane. You know, years ago, what they did, they took all those trained police officers who <coughs> went through the academy put them out on the road and got clerical people to come in and man that For a minute. Day, you know? That was a big game that was key. Right? That was and a 21st century police. Yeah? And mm -hmm. I was going to say something about the Tobago scenario. We have, they've built again, the THA, the PNM led THA has built several community centers throughout Tobago. And they're all shut tight. There's even a sign in the one where I'm living in in Lowlands. There is a sign that says no shorts, no flip flops, no t-shirts. And I'm saying, and this is in a computer lab by the way. Right? So the young people can't even come there after school to learn how to use a computer. And it's open from 8 to 4. So who are you really serving? Who's your market? Who are you really Who's serving? Who's your market? But we, we Trinidadians, sometimes we are our own obstacle in the progress. We seem to have a real crab in the barrel mindset where we don't want nobody to get bonus. I want to tell you something. You can't have it both ways, you know. Mm. The Prime Minister said they have 30,000 illegal guns in the country. If you pay $1,000 per gun to law enforcement, all them guns get picked up on them. Quick, quick time. Yeah. Because that's 30 million dollars. Mm -hmm. And imagine that 30 million dollars gets spent on police officers. You can develop their homes, their lives, make them happy while taking all the illegal guns off the street. That's a win, 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 win. Why wouldn't we support a plan like that? Why wouldn't we support a plan like that? And crime is a very, very serious or critical element in foreign investment. That's when right. foreign investors are looking for a fertile environment for investing, crime is a very serious consideration. Right. And it could possibly be that we have not attracted any foreign investment because of the high perceived crime rate in Trinidad and Tobago. Well, if, if yeah. I may say, the last major investment in Tobago was the Tobago Hilton Hotel. And that's going back almost 20 years ago. We've had nothing since then. And if there's 200 rooms, it's the largest room on the island. Let me make a stupid example to you. Generators need to understand this. The biggest problem in the PTSC is bus breakdowns. Mm -hmm. And bus bre buses break down because drivers treat the buses like I drive it now, and when I done, I hand back up the key. But if you give, you know how you count man hours? Mm -hmm. Count bus hours. So you drive in bus number 27 to the whole matter. You have the most amount of driving hours 
without a breakdown, like a bonus. Because you're saving us money. The cost of fixing a bus is a lot of money. The, in, we, you now have bus drivers coming through, getting involved, checking the oil, making mm -hmm. sure everything right. something and something come on on the dashboard, they're making sure they call and they say, listen, I have this going on, meet me on the field. Right. You, have, you have the whole yeah. maintenance right. crew meeting you on the field. You mm -hmm. come back up, you, you come back in and you, and you take it in, you make sure they clean out the bus. Mm -hmm. Somebody get a, a bonus at the end of the month, they have the best kept bus in the fleet, right. they have $5,000. Mm -hmm. Do not underestimate the power of incentives that yes. motivate you. I think, and that is, I, I think that is definitely what the problem is in terms of service in this country. I think that employees, public and and, and private, are demotivated. They are. They are, you know, they're not treated with the respect that they deserve to be treated with. And I think even every every job is important because somebody has to do it, and it and it is an essential service. My point is that we need to find ways to motivate employees. Am I motivating em uh, employees? They perform better, the company does better, and they do they... I I said, I said today, if you were paying me a good salary, you can make a sandwich in Subway. I'll be whistling all the day long. Mm -hmm. I'll be treating the customers like I'm happy to see them because the more sandwiches I make, the more money I get. Yeah. Yeah. And at the end of the day, that's what you want. You want a country where everybody happy and getting along and people can make money. And you more, you more ambitious than me because I might just want to live a normal life, but you might want a BMW life and there are opportunities for you to go on and make that money. It shouldn't be so difficult yeah. for people. To be to be vibrant and entrepreneurs and, and, and creative and make money. When you take a Trinidadian, we like you know you know like those trees that you plant them in a pot and they keep them in a pot for too long. Exactly. And you take them out the pot and you stick them in the ground, they just bloom. Yeah. Trinidadians, you take them and you put them in any developed country and they just bloom. That's right. Because we keep them stifled and isolated here. Yeah. And we have some of the most creative people in the world. I mean, talent-wise. Uh, cognitive ability. I th I think we do we don't have support in terms of how we treat our people, and in, in and the ripple effect of that is that they turn around and provide the same service that we are trying to improve. So if they are not given the respect, they're not going to be putting respect out there for their consumers. We have so to incentivize on. workers and incentivize businesses. You yes. know something that's at the flip side of all of this now that I've heard from workers in Tobago that works for government-owned businesses, the THA. They will come in and they will sabotage the same bus. Yeah. So that the bus can't go out, but they sit back and they still draw salary. Yes. This is the madness that we, goes on. We, we are the opposite of what we're discussing. Trinidad's public sector is the opposite of what yeah. we're talking about. Yeah. Because you, you, you agree to give a person a salary for a certain amount of work. Mm -hmm. This concept of work to rule has become fait accompli in this country. We used it as industrial bargaining and we use it as protest in the past, but now it becomes how we work. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we, we license an office, no matter what's going on in there, the cash it close at noon. Uh, three o'clock? Or noon and come back at one and no. close at, at noon? No, they've never stopped that. So at lunchtime, for a system that could be replaced mm -hmm. with an ATM machine, because mm -hmm. everybody inside of there have a link scan in their pocket, mm -hmm. and everybody could walk in there and pay all of their fees, swipe in that card, and punch it in a number. Mm -hmm. What would you like to do today? Yes. Because it's just a list of services. Now, I'm not trying to put the cashiers out of work, mm -hmm. but you're supposed to be able to go and renew your driver's permit 24 hours a day. Yes. It shouldn't require, if you need to get your phone badge redone, mm -hmm. you shouldn't have to take a day off and travel to Port of Spain. This country is run like we do not want to we do it. not want to progress. Mm -hmm. It is damaged by design. It cannot just be that these people are this stupid. I think they are doing this deliberately and at some point we're going to find out what all of this is for. Well, if you keep the people poor and uneducated, they cannot retaliate against the, the, the structure. If you educate the people, they are going to see that they need to stand up against the status quo. And we need to make changes and it has to be from a human point of view in terms of citizenship. So but the changes are not going to be made for us if we keep attacking the government, we have to be that change. But it's unfortunate because you're not seeing love for country. That's you're not it. seeing love for, say, for people. I want to say to everybody watching, please share the video and please share this information. The Maori Progressive and Parliament Party needs a protest outside the Parliament. We are going to say no. We reject this budget. It is insular. It is going to damage the economy. Plenty of people are going to suffer because of the madness that was read in Parliament on Monday. And we're saying to the government and the opposition, we reject this budget. And this is step one. Because if they bully us 
and they push past with this, then they're coming back to you, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, to say it is time to fire and replace this government and this opposition and put into office people who understand how to run a country and how to serve the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Tomorrow at noon, we will all be there and we're calling you out. Tomorrow school is closed, so the children, the family, and ours is a peaceful protest. We come out to say no. Come and add your voices to ours. Come and add your presence to ours. If we out there in numbers, they cannot ignore us. Political will is shaped by public response. It is time the public got together and let all 41 of them in that parliament know what we want. Someone just said that fear is a lot, it's, it's due to the lack of knowledge. We are providing knowledge. We are bringing the issues to you. We are letting you know what's going on out there. It is up to you to take a stand. And you need to take a stand. Tomorrow to schools. There's no school tomorrow. Yes. So you re there really is but no... you can bring the family, you can bring, bring the children. children. Correct. I, I mean, at the end of the day, our last uh, protest outside the parliament where people came there in new chairs, you could come however you are, travel, walk, show up. It is, and, and, and somebody told me that she was making a joke, that she had a nail appointment and she could put it off. You have to take this serious. This is, a, this, is a, a, this is as serious as a medical intervention. If you have to show up for surgery tomorrow, this is that kind of thing. So, wear orange. And please, 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 wear orange. Go and buy out all the orange t-shirts in town. Wherever you live, come out in orange. And we have Progressive Empowerment Party t-shirts on sale on site at the, from 2 o'clock. 12 o'clock. 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock where? Outside? Here, San Juan. Here, San Juan. Okay, San Juan. We will play the charades and the director is not very good at charades. So, I got two, but I think, I know. She was just very clear, though. We want to play charades. Um, I think that, um, I don't know if you all have anything else to add in closing. I, I, I would like to see that, that uh, Trinbegonians put country first. That's the individual, the smallest man on the ground right up to the leadership. If we put country first, we can take this country forward. What we have, I think, is the blueprint to what's developing this country. We need you to be part of that. We need you to come on board and we need you to understand that it's all hands on deck. We have a plan for the country, but we need your help to institute that plan. My comment will be, we, uh, is to, um, Second, what Susie says, and basically, we do need all of you. You've got to come off the fence. I have come off the fence. You know why? Because I can't pick up myself and my family and move to another country. I have to stay here and make do with what's happening. And I have decided that I am coming off the fence and getting involved because when I get older, it's not going to be pretty if there's no change. Trinidad is a dot compared to other countries. Why is it so difficult for us to get our act together? We need you. Come on board and sh give up your time, give up your knowledge, because it's with you that we can make this country a big change. Yeah, thanks a lot all of you who watch and all of you who share the video. The Progressive Empowerment Party is progressive by nature. It empowers, informs, and educates, and we are for one people under one flag. We are the eradication of tribal voting. We want to bring the people of this country back together in their own messages and work together with you to find the best way forward, the best that this nation can be. We know that we can be the best in everything. We can be the best in food production. We can have the best food, the best tourism. We can have the best. We already have the best country in the world. We already have the best people in the world. We are a nation suffering because of bad government. Government after government has come into power and made a mess of this country. And it is time to fix that. We need to undo and redo. Our, our manifesto is going to be called Reboot the Republic. Somebody said turn Trinidad off and turn it back on. We have a plan to do that. We're going to undo and redo all of the critical arms of state and make this country work again in service of the people. We are gathering tomorrow at 12 noon at the Parliament. The office at 19 Stanmore Avenue will be open at 11 o'clock. There are PEP t-shirts on sale. You can come and get them. This show, this live show on a Thursday night is going to be a feature now every week on Thursday. Um, party Chair Felicia Holder 
did a lot in making this happen tonight, and I'd like to thank her for that. She also did double duty and function as our charade play and director. Um, our PRO, Tony before he's here, um, what from, from, if not next week, if the budget debate continues, I'll be here. But Tony is going to be, generally, he's going to be the person hosting the shows with different members of the party, because we're going to use this as our, our way to introduce different members of the party. And you can meet them in their capacity and what they bring to the table. And you'll be able to judge the length, breadth, and depth of this party and what we bring to the national conversation. Yes? So, until tomorrow, until tomorrow at noon, stay safe, Janelle.